takes a look over his right hand shoulder. On paper, he's the fastest by far in this group. He rolls through. There's no contention whatsoever for the points. And it's Wout Van Aert who takes the 20 points. He just says to Askren, thanks very much. Soler once again makes his move. He's emptying the tank. He's, you could call it, the ultimate teammate for McNulty and Vine. They pass by the signs that say Yates, you can. Even Vine can't follow. Now this is a big stinging attack from Wout Van Aert, the green jersey. 20.3 kilometers to go. And Vine, who is an excellent climber, cannot follow the power of Wout Van Aert, the Belgian. The legs, and actually it's a funny feeling to, to say, but uh, sometimes just, oh, crash, crash, crash. Crash, crash with Double one of the crash. riders. One more rider down. Let's just see again. The rider here, no, there's that's a rider. Jay Vine the who's there. Be. And there's another rider who has gone down. And that is a white jersey. Jay Vine is back on his feet. Goes to the other side of the road, takes a spare bike. This is McNulty, who is just being helped out of the bushes, having crashed on that corner. He's being helped to his feet and helped back to the road. They're also really uh, not parked well there. If somebody, uh, the other riders are coming down. And he's hit his face. Dear me. Dear, dear me. wheel slides oh, he actually was uh, extremely extremely lucky in, in his unluckiness if I can say if he would have hit one of those uh, poles that holds the barrier those are extremely dangerous the past and they are there this is why I was saying that I don't think they're parked very well there the motorbikes it's going to continue yes he's just going to roll now I think and see how things go but uh, Woodsy uh, looking very good and you know when the commissary cars is passing, often means that you've opened up a significant gap. And even the neutral car is coming behind them. So that means about 25 to 30 seconds. Meanwhile, it's Quintana who's committing himself on the front. There's Ina Rubio. So it's two Colombians on the front for Movistar. Michael Woods. 13% gradient. And it doesn't look to be phasing him. Michael Woods, such a pure climber. The way he likes to keep this rhythm, always out of the saddle, keeping a really high cadence. Just down up, Rodriguez is there, but the race is going up the road for the GC here. Yes, the, the top GC riders now have really put on the pressure. I think it seems like Carapaz has also been distanced. Oh, he almost came off there. Uh, Vlasov, and there's the acceleration of Roglic. Michael Woods is going to take his fourth Grand Tour stage victory. A rider who thrives in the Vuelta, thrives on these steep gradients. And on stage 13, as he takes a look over his shoulder, Mike, there's no one behind you. A wonderful performance. Another Vuelta stage victory. And it's the Maple Leaf that's victorious. Mike Woods, the Canadian champion, wins stage 13. Here's the red jersey. He's losing more and more time. And now Felix Gal is having to wait for Ben O'Connor. Ben O'Connor not able to follow his teammate. Felix Gall came into the day, by the way, ninth overall at 5.30 behind his teammate O'Connor. He takes the faster line. He makes a little bit of an acceleration. One bike length starts to open up to Mass. So that becomes two, that becomes three, that becomes four. Now Mass is unable to follow Roglic. Roglic going in pursuit of more time. And look at how easy the Slovenian makes this look. That oh, and Ben O'Connor is a... Uh Again, having another another struggle. This is a day where we could see a huge shake-up in the general classification. This is the first assault from Primoz Roglic in trying to do that. Stop the clock, 10 minutes and 54 seconds. In this camera shot, the red jersey nowhere to be seen. Carapaz fighting for every single second. There's one second there. Here's the red jersey, Ben O'Connor. What is the time difference going to be between Primoz Roglic and Ben O'Connor by the end of stage 13? He crosses the line, 154 down. Breeder was going to put the two hands in the air. So look out, just take a breeder first. It's reminiscent of the Puy de Dome when he won. The fact it was so steep and he had nothing left in the tank. Trying to do no-handed to try and celebrate.